Welcome to the ENI webinar. My name is Neha Workis, and today I'm going to explore the analysis tools in IMG that allows the user to compare isolate genomes using their average nucleotide identity. A few instructions about the webinar. All participants will be muted. Please use the chat to ask any questions. The questions in the chat will be answered by one of or more of the several panelists that join me today. This chat will be transcribed and posted. So if your question is missed, it will be answered in the posted file. During the webinar, I will also post pause at certain junctions and ask my co-host Rika Shushadri if there are any general interest questions that I can answer live. A live recording of this webinar will also be posted at a later date. Something to keep in mind, that although we intend for this webinar to be about an hour long, given IMG lag, or if there are a lot of questions, we might go over an hour. So a brief overview of what I will cover in this webinar. I'll first start with a brief introduction about GGI and IMG. There will be a science introduction about what ENI is, why we use IMG, what the computational pipeline is, the specifics about how ENI is computed, what the method is, and then I will move on to a live demo. So about GGI, GGI is a DOE Office of Science user facility managed by Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. We promote omic driven science wherein we enable access to large scale genomics. We have several different programs to support the different sciences, including microbial genomics, metagenomics, metabolomics, and so on. We also work in close collaboration with NERSC, which provides supercomputing access to facilitate high throughput analysis in all of these different fields and programs. About IMG, there are two main access points, as this has been described in previous webinars. The first one is IMGM. This is a public access. There is no registration required. You can access only public data, and there are limited tools of uh, limited tools and capabilities. Then we have IMGMER. ER stands for Expert Review. This requires registration. Um, you can submit and annotate your own data, and thus you have access to public as well as your own private data. You can submit jobs, you can save results, you have workspace access, and you also have access to an expanded set of tools and functions. Today's presentation will involve use of IMG MER. So to that end, I hope everyone attending has their registration complete as per the email that was sent out. So let's go on to the science talk. What is average nucleotide identity? So let's consider a case where you two sequenced and annotated genomes. This is your first genome, genome A, and your second genome, genome B. One of the first things, how the two genomes are related to one another. There are many different ways you can achieve this. You can use DDH. You can look at the distance between the 16S gene of the genomes. Or you can align the two genomes and determine how many nucleotides they have in common. And this is ENI. Once you align the two genomes, the number of genes that are autologous is the alignment fraction. That is the fraction of genes that are autologous between the two genomes. Within those aligned autologous genes, the nucleotide level similarity is ENI. So ENI tells you how many nucleotides are identical between your autologous genes. And I will explain this in detail in the next slide. So how do we compute ENI and EF? So as I said, we start with the genes of your two genomes. This is the nucleotide sequences of the genes of genome A and the nucleotide sequences of the genes of genome B. Now the first step in the method is to run a sequence similarity search. There are de many different tools available to achieve this. Uh, what we use is LAST. It's a sequence search program that is very similar to BLAST. However, they have a 
technical innovation where they find the initial matches based on multiplicity instead of a fixed length. The results are comparable at high level identity. So that's what we use for our sequence similarity search. Now, once we run last between the two genomes, we determine the bi-directional best hits. Essentially, a bi-directional best hit is when a gene from one genome is the top hit to the gene from another genome, and this gene from your second genome is also the top hit to this gene of your first genome. So we parse, parse the blast results, last results, sorry, to identify the bi-directional best hits. And we retain these conserved genes, and we use this information to compute the alignment fraction and the ANI. The alignment fraction is essentially the length of the bi-directional best hit genes divided by summation of the lengths of genome one. So this you can see over here is computed from genome one to genome two and two to one. So this will tell you how many genes of genome one are conserved in genome two, and then we compute it in the other direction, vice versa. We then compute the average nucleotide identity, and this is computed by multiplying the percent identity into the alignment length across all of your bidirectional best hit genes. This is divided by the length of your bidirectional best hits, and this is also computed bidirectionally, you know, one to two and two to one. So this will tell you how many nucleotides are identical among your bidirectional best hit genes. So as I said, you can compute ANI in many different ways, um, but why use IMG specifically for ANI analysis? Now IMG implements the MISI method, microbial species identifier method. This has been described in detail in this paper. Uh, the link to this paper should have been sent to you in the email. I encourage you to read the paper and understand truly what the thresholds are and what we've done to answer any questions you might have about the research. And just a brief overview of the method is we start with a query set of the genes of genomes and we compute the ENA EF at an all against all basis. We then identify those pairs that are above the predetermined thresholds. So in the paper we describe in detail that we determine the ANI threshold of greater than or equal to 96.5 and an alignment fraction threshold greater than or equal to 60. Oops, sorry. Greater than or equal to 60 correspond to species level delineation. So once we identify those pairs that have bidirectional ANI and bidirectional EF above these thresholds, we cluster them. We apply maximal click enumeration to identify maximally connected clicks, click groups, and singletons. And I will describe this in detail in the next couple of slides. So let's go over and let me walk you through the method. Suppose you start with a set of seven genomes, one to seven. The first step, as I said, is to compute ANA EF for all of the genomes. And this is the table that it would generate. Genome one to genome two, um, your ENI from one to two, ENI from two to one, alignment fraction from one to two, and the alignment fraction from two to one. As you can see, the ENI are differing and the alignment factor differs. And this is something to keep in mind as we walk along. Next step in the missing method is to determine which of these pairs are about the predetermined thresholds, and I've highlighted those pairs. Over here, I've shown you a graphical representation of the linkages, where every single circle is a genome, and a link exists between two genomes if the ENI and EF are about the thresholds of 96.5 and 60. Again, these thresholds have to be met in both directions. So as you can see over here, genome one to two is connected to five, one to five, five to three, six and seven. This genome four over here remains a singleton as in it does not have the required ENIEF to any other genome in your query set. So once that is complete, we run our clustering where we apply 
maximal click enumeration. Maximal click enumeration identifies completely linked clusters. A completely linked cluster is where every genome has a link to every other genome in your cluster. So once we apply MCE to our current set of genomes, you can see that we form three clusters. You have a cluster that has genome one, two, and five. You have another cluster of five and three, and a third cluster of six and seven. Now this is what I need you to pay attention to in terms of the fact that five overlaps between this cluster and this cluster. So what we do is we apply post process data and overlapping clicks are combined to form click groups. And thus we end up with three different types of clusters, click groups, singleton, and clicks. Okay, um, Rika, are there any questions about this method? Um, nope. Um, I guess the only uh, question that I thought might be worth um, answering on air was whether plasmids and chromosomes are used to determine A and I. No, we do not. Uh, no, no. Um, sorry, let me read the question. Sorry, it's gone up in the... Uh, does A and I take into account plasmidic DNA or only chromosomal? And the answer really is that it uses all the genes in the genome mm -hmm. since we can't reliably even identify um, plasmid sequences in draft genomes, for example. It has been identified and is separated out, then we don't include them. Oh, okay. So for complete genomes where mm -hmm. plasmids are known, uh, only chromosomal sequences are taken into account? Yes. Okay. Perfect. And for draft genomes, everything is taken into account. Yes. That's it. Thank you. Okay. So this was the introduction of science. We're going to go on to the live demo now. Okay. Is this clear, Rico? Can you see it? Yes, looks good. Okay, great. So as you can see, I'm on the IMG MER landing page. I have already logged in. I'm going to give you just a brief overview of the three tools that are a part of ENI, how to get there and what they mean. So in order to get to ENI, you can go to the menu bar and you go under compare genomes. Again, the menu bar, compare genomes. And if you go down, you'll see that there is an average nucleotide identity tab. This over here has an additional drop down, which will give you the three tools that we'll explore pairwise ANI, same species plot, and ANI clusters. So I'm going to go to the landing page of ANI, and in order to do so, I'm going to click right here on average nucleotide identity. So this brings you to the landing page. This describes uh, pretty much what I showed you in the slides an overview of the method um, that we generate click, click groups and singletons. An important note over here is that we generate genome statistics, cluster statistics, and cluster type statistics. Over here, we list how many genomes are used in the analysis. As you can see, the, there are only about 67,000 genomes used for ENI computation. This number is lower than all the isolate genomes in IMG. The reason for this is that we have really high quality checks and thresholds for running ANI computation. And this is to ensure that we don't sort of contaminate our database and ensure that the clusters that you see are high confidence clusters. There are about 15,000 species that are included. Um, you can see that we have 6,000 species and clusters that are spread across 16,000 clusters. Another number of interest is that we have several clicks and click groups with type strains in them. So these are interesting details that you can look over. Uh, something to keep in mind over here is that we show you two numbers. This is the important number to, uh, date to look at. It shows you analysis last updated. The analysis is updated on a monthly basis, and this will tell you when the analysis was last updated. So for example, if you've just submitted a genome and it's been annotated, 
and you believe that it is high quality and has met, has met our threshold, it may still not be within the database because the analysis hasn't been updated yet. So this gives you a good idea of whether to wait before emailing us about it. Then you, the three tools that I described can also be accessed from the bottom of the page. Pairwise AMI, same species club, and AMI clusters. So this is just a brief overview of the AMI landing page. I will explore the three tools using a genome species example. Now consider you have a species of interest and you want to identify a high confidence, sort of high quality set of genomes to begin your analysis. We will be using Bayer Isobium japonicum as an example here. This is just to follow the trend of the previous webinars. You can consider this as a placeholder species of whatever your species of interest is. The demo will go through the challenges of determining a high confidence data set and how to address those challenges using AN. Okay, any questions, Rico? Um, no, it's, it's okay, we got it in chat. Great. Okay, so the, let's first of all find out, find all of the Breyer Isobium Japonicum genomes in IMG. And to do so, we're going to go to the main menu bar, find genomes, and genome search. Again, find genomes to genome search. The genome search was covered in a previous webinar, uh, so I'm going to go straight to advanced search builder, and I'm going to build a really simple query line where in the taxonomy for species, I'm going to select Brady Rhizobium Japonicum. Now I'm a super user, so I have access to a lot of different private data. So I'm going to add a secondary sort of filter to only include public data sets. So to do, to, to do that, I'm going to select SQL assembly annotation. Select is public and yes. And so that's it. I'm going to look for Brady Rhizobium species that are public. I'm going to click on search. So you finally end up with 20 genomes over here that are radio isobium and public. You can see that there are different sequencing statuses, there are sequence at different places, they have different genome size and genome counts, and this would be our starting set for any analysis that we want to perform. So I'm going to select this page and add selected to genome crack. So although these are all the same species, one of the things we would like to know is whether they are similar in genome identity. In a majority of cases, the taxonomy assignment is done solely using the 16S gene. So there is a need to dwell into the genomes in detail to ensure a high confidence set. So ANI allows you to determine if there is possible contamination or incorrect naming. So how do we go about this? We are going to go back to compare genomes, ANI, and the first tool, pairwise ANI. Again, compare genome, average nucleotide identity, and the first selection, pairwise ANI. This brings you to the landing page of pairwise ANI. There are three main boxes over here. The first box is the selection box, which allows you to select your genome of interest. And the other two boxes allow you to add your genomes of interest to carry your pairwise computation. As you can see, the selection box default fills the genomes from your genome card. This is the way we would encourage you to fill your selection box. If this is not something you want to do, you can always search for genomes of interest by selecting what kind of sequencing status and what domain you would like to look at. Once you do so um, and you click on show, the selection box will fill with all the genomes that are under your category. You can do a quick search over here, type to enter your genome name of search. And within your selections over here, 
you can search. For example, I'm going to search for USDA. And this will highlight how many of these genomes have what we searched for in the genome name. Over here, it'll show you how many have also been selected. Then you can simply add them to whichever pairwise box you would like. We'll clear that. So there are different ways to add to your pairwise box. One is through your selection box over here. You can also upload sets from your workspace. You can also upload a file. Now this would be the nucleotide sequences of the genes of your genome of interest. This will allow you to run an external genome against a set of IMG genomes. If you do choose to do so, I would encourage you to not include the tRNA and RNA and rRNA, because this might uh, artificially inflate your ANI. So right now, I'm going to select all of the genomes that are in my cart. There are 20 over here, and that's great because in my cart, there are 20 genomes. I'm going to add them to both pairwise 1 and pairwise 2. So again, I selected them all and added them to pairwise 1 and pairwise 2. Now you can click on ANI. But what I would encourage you to do is to submit it as a job. And you can call this job whatever you like. Once you click on Submit Job, it will bring you to this page. It will tell you that your job has been successfully submitted. Now, although you can simply click the Paradise a &I button, I encourage you to submit it as a job unless you're working with five genomes or less. There is a high chance that your genome pairs are not pre-computed. And another thing to keep in mind is that you can always come back to your results if you submit them as a job. So you can, once your job is complete, you will get an email that your job has been completed. In order to access it, you will go to Workspace and My Jobs. As you can see, my job has been submitted and is currently waiting. So I have run this previously and I'm going to go to the results from this previous job that I submitted. Now to get there, you click on completed. And this will bring you to a table. This table will list genome one, genome two, ANI one to two, ANI two to one, your alignment fraction one to two, your alignment fraction two to one. I'll also tell you whether your pair was pre-computed or not. This is the same table that you would get to if you were to click on the Payrise ENI button instead of submitting a job. So as you can see, we can sort the table. And this will show you that there are several pairs over here that have no ENI. 87 and a low alignment fraction over here, for example, only 50% of the genes of this genome are conserved over here. And these numbers are low for what you would expect to see from two genomes that are of the same species. So this highlights the issue that although the 16S has high identity between the genomes, um, the ANI is much better <clears throat> at providing the whole genome picture. And you can explore this <clears throat> in detail to identify pairs of interest. So this is your pairwise A92. Any questions that I can answer, Rico? Um, yeah, there's a question about um, using this uh, A and I A and F thresholds for graph genomes. Mm -hmm. How what how useful it is with when you're comparing graph genomes. So based on the analysis that we did in the paper, we found that if your genome is in up to 2,500 scaffolds, it works really well. I mean, it works well enough is what I would say. So it does work well with draft genomes, but just keep in mind that if it's more than 2,500 scaffolds, you're going to face issues with the results. Right. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay, so 
as you can see, just based on this table, there are several pairs that have questionable E and I and questionable EF. Now, one of the things we can explore is does this issue extend to other species in the same genus? Are there other species in Brady rhizobium that have questionable E and I EF within the species? In order to do so, we're going to look at the same species plot. In order to access the same species plot, we go to compare genomes, average nucleotide identity, and the second option. So again, compare genomes, average nucleotide identity, same species plot. So the same species pairwise ANI allows you to analyze a, up to 100 species. Mm -hmm. Please note that it may not be possible to display the plot for species that have more than 200 genomes, and you'll see why that's the case. It shows you a table that lists your domain, the species, number of genomes of that species, how many clusters that species exists in, and what are the represented cluster types. So you can see that this particular species is in one cluster, and that cluster is a thing. There are different examples that you can look at that are much more distributed, that they're in click groups and singleton, some are in click groups and singleton, and you can explore that in detail over here. What we're gonna look for are a specific genus. So under species, I'm going to type and then a plot. So we have a list of the Brady species, uh, Brady species over here. I am going to select all of them, and then I'm going to remove this SP over here because it's an unnamed species, and then another SP over here. So we have 14 species over here that have several different genomes that are across different clusters, represented in different cluster types. And then I'm going to plot them. You can plot them using the to the button at the top of the page or the bottom of the page, it's the same thing. Once you click on plot, it will show you a graph where the x-axis is the final ENI, which is essentially the lower of the two ENIs in both directions, and your final EF, which is a lower of the two alignment fractions. Every single dot over here, is an intraspecies pair. So these are two genomes of the same species, Brady rhizobium japonicum. Over here, you have two genomes of Brady rhizobium, blah, blah, blah. The legend over here shows you that each color is a different species. Um, you can zoom in and out in case you have a species that's spread across really high ENA and really low EF. It also allows you to zoom in on genomes of interest. <clears throat> so, as you can see, there are uh, a large number of species over here that are about 96 ENI and have a really good alignment fraction as well, about 60. So, this is what you would expect to see. You would expect to see all your intra species pairs to have high ENI and high EF. Over here, you can see that there is a cluster of genomes that are that have low ENI and lower, but lower than expected alignment fraction. <clears throat> and then these are essentially your outliers. This could be um, for a lot of different reasons. And in order to explore them in more detail, you can hover over them to identify the genome IDs. If you click on them, it will give you this little pop-up box that shows you what two genomes are in this specific pair. You can select the genome and add them to the cart. The more genomes you sort of click on, the more your pop-up will populate. So this will allow you to sort of zoom in on these outliers, add them to your cart, and then explore them more in detail a little later. So the outliers can be for many different reasons. Um, one of the things that we, wanna, we could explore is whether or not these genomes are incorrectly named. 
should they have es essentially be named a different species? Is this different species a known species? For example, is this Bradyrhizobium japonicum actually a different Bradyrhizobium? Now, in order to do so, or to understand if these could be a different known species, you would need to run the ANIAF computation against all the other genomes in IMG. And this is what we have done. So we will explore those clusters through the third tool. Um, I'm going to stop over here and ask again, is there any questions that I can answer? Um. Um, it's good, Neha. I think somebody, you know, asked the obvious question, which is, um, you know, why are we seeing all these different names if the thresholds are met? Uh, and I think you're, you're in the process of answering that, so. Okay, great. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the third tool, which again, under compare genomes, average nucleotide identity, and ANI clusters. So ANI clusters allows you to explore the pre-generated clusters, the clustering that I talked about in the slides, the click, click groups, and singletons through different points of view. You can look at all of the clusters, and this is essentially a table that gives you cluster ID, what type of cluster it is, whether it's a click group or singleton or a click. It tells you what the contributing species are, as in what the species are of of the member genomes in this cluster, and how many total genomes are there in this specific cluster. You can also explore the clusters by species, which shows you a table that allows you to see the domain, species, how many genomes of that species, and how many clusters they're in, and what the represented cluster types are, whether they're singletons, clicks, or click groups. You can also drill down using taxonomy, wherein you can select a sequencing status, a domain. When you click on show, it will load a tree that you can further expand to drill down to your genome of interest of a particular species. The final way to look at the clusters is to only look at the click groups. Over here, we're showing you a graphical representation of groups. This is a good way to visualize the network among your genomes of interest and identify how many missing links they are. There's a little hint over here that shows you that any two genomes in the click group will be connected by an edge in the graph that they have an ENI greater than or equal to 96.5 and alignment greater than or equal to 60. If you hover over them, they will highlight the the cluster ID, and if you click on them, they will take you to the page for a particular click group. Okay, so these are the four ways to explore the clusters. Let's explore this by looking at our example. We want to know if the Japonicum outliers are possibly a different known species. Now, the intuitive way to do that is to explore it by the species tab, right? You will go to by species and filter with reading, right? Hope I saw that right. And click apply. You can see that your Brady Rhizobium japonicum are 20 genomes that are in seven clusters. So if we go back to just looking at all of the species, you can see that this is not what you would expect to see in a large number of cases. You would expect to see most of your genomes of a specific species to be in a single cluster. And there are a few cases of that where you see, for example, a serial over here, there are 300 genomes in a single click. And the fact that we don't see that in Brady is really Go back to reading. Uh, 
the fact that you don't see that with your radarized over in Japan normally highlights the heterogeneity among the genomes of the species. So in order to identify what the clusters are, we're going to click on number of clusters. And you can see that there are several clusters, most of them are clicked, there is a singleton. Now here to keep in mind is that the genome count over here is only of the genomes of radioisobium japonicum. As you can see, this doesn't actually tell you whether or not your japonicum outliers are of a different species. So this is not the way to explore or try to answer that question. The correct way to do that would be to use the all clusters tab. So let's go back, look at all clusters, and then in the contributing species, we're going to type in made by Zobium Japan. And we're going to see that there are the same results, your clicks, your singletons, but it shows you over here what your contributing species are. And this is what we're interested in. You can see that your japonicums actually cluster with genomes of different species within the radiorhizobium genus. We can explore this a little more in detail. For example, let's look at this um, SB for over here. I'm going to open this link in a new tab. This brings you to the cluster detail page, and this is the same for all the clusters. If you have a click group, you'll have an additional tab over here that shows you the graphical representation of your click group. The cluster details overview tabs gives you basic cluster information, what your cluster ID is, what your cluster type is, and how many genomes are in your cluster. You click on the genomes and cluster tab. You can see that the three genomes, there's two japonicums and an SP. Since this is a clip, it's a completely connected clip cluster in which your SP has the required thresholds to the two other japonicums here. But are they high enough? So in order to explore that, we're going to select this page. And instead of going back, adding it to your card and going back, you can run Paris ANI right here. You click on Paris ANI and look at your all against all. So these are your two SPs of interest, and you can see that they have really high ANI and a sufficiently high alignment fraction to the other two japonicums. So this shows you that this SP could possibly be included in your analysis because it actually has really high identity to a known species. And this is another example of where we've used ENI to assign a taxonomic name to an unknown species. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the clusters over here. So we explored this one. We can also look at an example where there are two known species, for example, the diazo efficients. So I'm going to open that. It brings you to the same type of cluster details page, your ID, how many genomes. There are 11 genomes over here that have different species and there is one japonicum and several different uh, diaphysians. Again, the question now is that, is this actually a japonicum? Based on the clustering, you could say with certain high confidence that the japonicum is actually diaphysians. And we can explore that a little more in detail by again, selecting the page and running pairwise ANI. So we're gonna sort it to bring up Japonicum, and you can see that it has really high ANI and sufficiently high alignment fraction to a large number of the diazo efficients. So there's a good chance that you should remove that particular Japonicum from your analysis. There has been studies now that have actually been exploring the renaming of Japonicum, and again, ANI is really good at sort of highlighting those naming issues that need to be reconsidered. Okay, so these were your different clusters. Any questions right now? Um, yeah, from Ryan asks, ortho ANI and uh, DDH are two other genome-based methods. 
for species delineation. Um, um, so compared to GA and I, genomic A and I, what is your take on these two methods in terms of how they compare with A and I for species delineation? So I haven't actually looked at ortho A and I or DAH. Maybe Natalia, have you looked at it? I am generally familiar with them, but I have basically we didn't do a detailed comparison. Correct. So the ortho A and I, it is basically chopping the genome into fragments, like one KB fragments. And then um, running, finding pairwise essentially uh, the deviations between these fragments. But these are random fragments, not the nucleotide sequences of the CDSs that uh, MISI uses. I see. So it's more a so, whole genome based method as opposed to a gene based method. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can answer um, a general question about that is how does it compare to a whole genome, if that's something of interest, Rico? Yes. Okay, um, so we did actually do a comparison between the whole genome. Based approach, um, you know, the gene based approach, and then we found was that you do get the same sort of um, ENI values at high to use just the genes of the genomes. So genes to improve your computational time and still getting your ENI EF values at the high identities for species level interest. So that's what we found when we did our analysis in 2015. Uh, and then I guess this, this question has been asked a few times. How, what would the result, how would the result vary if you have mags? We actually are in the process of exploring that. We haven't determined um, what the threshold should be if you have a mag, because there's a lot of different questions over there in terms of completion, in terms of what is considered contamination, what is considered a good completion level. So we are currently exploring that, and that's something that we should be able to implement in IMG in the coming years. But we don't know the answer to that yet. Okay, thank you. Okay guys, so this was the overview of the three tools that use ENI to explore the genome level relations among isolate genomes. I hope this gives you not only a good overview of the tools, but also encourages you to take a closer look at your genome data. To remind everyone, the chat will be transcribed and posted, and the live recording will also be posted at a later date. Do you have anything to add, Rika? Um, yeah, so we're working on the closed captions for all the webinars and uh, uh, we're working on it right now. And we think that the first three webinars uh, should be available by Friday. And uh, this current webinar uh, sometime next week, I will send uh, an email out uh, with links to all of that. So just stay tuned, just be a little patient with us, but uh, we're definitely working on it. They will be made available. Oh, it would also be very useful if you guys could um, uh, maybe fill out the IMG survey form that will be included in that email. Uh, that, would be, that would be really valuable for us. Okay, great. Thanks everyone. Uh, stay safe and healthy. Bye.